In the present, due to the development of severe internet addiction of the teenagers, a civilian education facility called as the Elite Re-Education Academy was created. The main goal of this academy is to help and train the youngsters and teenagers to grow up as a productive, independent and self-respecting adults. One day, as Hibiki went to a cyber cafe to play his usual game, he gets drugged by strange people and passes out. As he wakes up, he sees many teenagers just like him stuck in a strange room. Seeing this he immediately thought that they have been transported into a game world just like he had read in a manga and he gets heavily excited. Suddenly, the doors of that strange room opens and Soldier rushes in. The hothead mistress with glasses of that academy, named Jean, makes her entrance and introduces herself to everyone and explaining about the academy that it is made specifically for trash like them. One of the teenagers makes a mockery of them, telling that he knows about that place and he is sure that they cannot hurt him because of laws and regulation of their country. Just then, the school head instructor named Cheyenne immediately beats him to the ground with blood splashing all over, and he continues his beating till the kid eventually passes out. The remaining teenagers were all shocked and scared in seeing this. Cheyenne explains to them that the only rules at this school is that they will only obey and do anything that the headmistress and he himself tells them to do. As Cheyenne takes roll call for them, he calls Hibiki the abandoned garbage because he saw his biodata that his mother totally abandoned him there until he reaches age 18. His mother did all this because he had a severe internet addiction and was extremely disobedient with his mother. And this is the reason why they had to drug him so that they could take him easily to this facility. Hibiki pleads Cheyenne to let him talk to his mother because he must be mistaken, but he is immediately declined. Then, Cheyenne tells him that he saw him earlier casting a glance at the headmistress. Hibiki immediately denies it, but he gets beaten by Cheyenne on the accusation of not looking at her even though she is very beautiful. And when he asks him again, Hibiki says yes, but was beaten again for being a pervert. He finally realized that this is his reality now, and he cannot do anything about it. After that, they were bathed and dressed like prisoners and Hibiki decides that he will run away from that place because it is too terrifying for him. Without anyone noticing, Hibiki managed to sneak to the rooftop of one of the buildings but he sees that there is no escape from that place. So, he tries to kill himself, but suddenly, one of the students named Shin calls him out telling him that he can help him in his suicide attempt because he could see his hesitations. He further tells him that he should jump by aiming at the head instructor for his revenge for hurting him, because that way it will benefit not only him but to the rest of the students as well. But at the end, Hibiki decides not to jump and Shin offers him a deal that if he sells his life to him, he will surely make his life easy in that prison and his life will have meaning as well. Because he knows that Hibiki has been living a meaningless life and wasting it by playing games. And as his first offer he will turn him into a real man because he can see that Hibiki is a total Hearing this, Hibiki panics and he tells him that he is not into guys and to stay away from him. Shin got so furious at him for thinking that he is not straight, that he starts beating the shit out of him. Later, he hands him a binocular and tells him that he can choose any girl from the field and he will surely get her to pop his cherry for him. Hibiki is very excited and tells him that he will do anything he says to him. As Hibiki is looking for the girls he notices Shiori, the girl he had a crush on during his middle school, and he is totally surprised to see her there, because she was an honor student, not an internet addicted like him. With that, Shin tells Hibiki to leave it to him and he will surely get a taste of his old crush. After that, Shin took Hibiki to Cheyenne as they were searching for him, telling him that Hibiki got lost as he was trying to find the bathroom. Cheyenne decides to believe him and he gives them a warning. And Shin tells Cheyenne and all his guards that Hibiki has become his dog, indirectly telling them not to mess with him and they were all surprised in hearing this. Cheyenne lets Hibiki off without any punishments and he warns Shin that hope he has chosen a good dog. Seeing all this, Hibiki was really impressed with him and he starts to believe that he actually has influential power in that school. Shin plans his scheme to get Shiori for Hibiki by telling Wudo the discipline officer to do something for him. With that, Wudo starts molesting a girl named Jun and takes out a phone from her. He starts telling her that phones are banned in this school and she will be in deep trouble if the teachers find out. He further tells the boys to hold her while he checks if she is hiding something else. Suddenly, Shiori appears with a knife to Wudo's neck threatening him to let her go. One of the boys tries to fight her but is immediately defeated by her. But suddenly, another student throws a big rock towards her, but Hibiki managed to stop the rock with his head, saving Shiori. As they were trying to fight, the guards came and they had to stop the fight and Shiori invites the girl and Hibiki to follow her. 
as Shiori is treating Hibiki's wound. They talk about their past and Hibiki is having the time of his life and seeing the package that his old crush is packing. And because of this, he got excited. But Shiori got so angry at him that she almost cuts his entire generation off. With that, Shiori immediately tells Jun to make a trade with her, and the girl and Hibiki is totally surprised in hearing this. Shiori tells Jun that she didn't save her out of justice, it is because she needs something from her. And what she needs is a phone from her because she is impressed with her ability to smuggle a phone when the inspection is very strict in that school. But Jun disagrees, therefore, Shiori tells her to leave and she will not protect her again the next time she gets bullied. Hibiki immediately tells Shiori why has she become so cold, when in the past, it was her kindness that he was able to get back on his feet when he was at the depth of despair. But, Shiori just looks at him with her cold eyes and tells him to disappear. Just then, Shin makes his entrance, and shows them a phone telling that he will give it to them if they follow his condition. Jun tries to snatch it from him, but Shiori immediately stops her and she asks Shin his condition. He tells his condition to the both of them, that if any one of them is able to pop Hibiki's cherry and make him a man, he will give the phone to that girl. Hearing this, Jun immediately tries to seduce Hibiki, and he immediately falls into her charms like a little but Shiori immediately attacks her and Jun had no choice but to escape, since Shiori is a lot stronger than her and Shiori immediately threatens Shin with her knife as well to hand over the phone. But, Shin reveals that the phone he is holding is just a pamphlet and only if she finishes his condition, he will give her the phone that he had hit earlier. Therefore, Shiori has no choice but to follow Shin's condition and she tries to develop plot with Hibiki. And as she is seducing Hibiki, he gets so excited that his life flash before his eyes and he is glad that he didn't kill himself earlier. But as she kisses him, she ends up vomiting on his mouth. She tries again and again, but every time she always ends up vomiting. Seeing all this, Hibiki decides to be a real man and tells her to stop forcing herself and he promises her on his life. That even though he is not that reliable, he will surely help her get the phone she needs and he will also help her to escape from this school. He wants to do all this because he cannot bear to see his old crush who is a very sweet, innocent, and a kind girl to become into a heartless monster. With that, he immediately starts milking himself on the corner so that he can prove to Shin that he had made plot with Shiori. Seeing his dedication, Shiori thanks him and tells him that if anyone tries to bully him, she will cut all of them down. And Hibiki is very happy in hearing this because he thought that maybe he has a chance with her to turn her into his girlfriend. Later, Shiori is able to get the phone and Hibiki is able to show the proof to Shin. And he arrogantly tells Shin that the next time, he should not use a girl's body for a trade because it is ethically bad. But Shin got so angry at him for being so arrogant, that he starts choking him and tells him that, from that day onwards he is his dog and he should address him as master, because he has completed his end of the deal. Hibiki disagrees and he tells him that he did not make such promises and the only deal he made with him was not to kill himself and nothing else. Shin is angry with him but he decides to let him be. After that, Hibiki heads to his dormitory and he is very worried to enter his new room because he thinks that he might get bullied. But the dorm in charge named Bin greets him in a polite manner and they enter his room. Hibiki gets surprised because his roommate whom he thought would bullet him, welcome him with open arms instead. His new roommates makes their introduction as the dorm prefect Kaio, followed by Rai and Toh, and they were all very friendly with him. Hibiki is really confused with their friendliness towards him, but it turns out that they were nice to him because they thought that he is Shin's dog, and they were expecting to get good food from that day onwards if they are friendly with Hibiki as well, because Shin is like a boss in that prison who can eat any luxurious foods he wants, whereas the rest of the student has to eat the ration food which tastes and smells like shit. And when they figure out that Hibiki is not Shin's dog anymore, they tried to beat him. But turns out they couldn't, since they are all weakling and they have no energy as well since they have not eaten for days. And they confess to him that Bin has been asking them protection money, and this is the reason why they have not got any food for days. Hearing all this, Hibiki decides to help them out by confronting Bin to stop exploiting them. But they warn him that it won't end well for him if he messes with Bin. Hibiki just ignores them and he immediately heads to Bin's office. As he enters his office, he confronts Bin telling him to stop exploiting his roommates. But he replies to him that he does not care, and he will do whatever he wants since he is the dorm in charge, and he knows that they cannot complain to anyone. And therefore, Hibiki couldn't say anything back to him. Elsewhere, Shiori discovers that she cannot use the phone because there is no internet connection in that place. Therefore, Jun asks her that she can help with her problem if she can hand over the phone to her. But Shiori declines because she knows that the girl is a con artist. 
After that, Hibiki attends the school assembly, and he is very excited because the first class after the assembly is gym class. But, Kayo tells him to stop joking around because this is not an ordinary school, and they usually have no time for class in the classroom. Instead, they have to do military training from day to night which is very very exhausting. Cheyenne makes his way to the assembly and he starts taking their roll call for all the students. Since there are new students in the school, Cheyenne explains the rules of the school to all the new students. All the students must wake up and be ready by 7 am, or they will head out for training and evening curfew is at 9 pm and everyone must be back to their dorm by then. Phone and internet are banned in the campus and those who are late to training, insubordinate or fail to complete their task or training, will be punished. Those who break the rules, skip training, or ignore warnings, will get a weak house arrest in the hole. In exchange, those who act as role models for other students will be rewarded. After that, they had to do a very harsh military training. But Hibiki is able to dominate in all of his training because in the past he was a very athletic student. But he quit due to a certain circumstances. His roommates however couldn't complete the training and they all fell down to the ground because they haven't eaten for days. Cheyenne immediately punishes them, by kicking and punching them severely. Seeing all this, Hibiki couldn't bear it, and he tries to stop Cheyenne from punishing them by telling him that they miss their lunch and they don't have any energy or stamina to train. Cheyenne immediately beats him as well, but Hibiki is able to fight back, and tells him to beat him more if he thinks what he is doing is right. But he continues to hit him and Hibiki doesn't give up at all telling him that he will never submit to him because what he is doing is illegal, and he will surely report him to the police. Cheyenne tells him that at this school he is the police and the law. He grabs his head and tells him to ask his friends and classmates to save him. But all his classmates and his roommate, who he was trying to save, tells him that the head instructor is right and he is the one who is wrong. Hearing this Hibiki gets really demotivated, and as Cheyenne tries to punish him more, Shiori immediately comes to his rescue. Hibiki gets very happy to see her, and he thinks that at least someone is supporting him. But, Shiori beats him even more and she tells Cheyenne that as the student council president, she takes the responsibility of the insubordination of the new arrivals. And she asks Cheyenne to give Hibiki one more chance and she will make sure that this doesn't happen again. Hibiki is totally disappointed with Shiori, but she tells him to not act like a hero in that school because most of the instructor there are retired military or ex-cops and he will never be able to beat them. Hibiki disagrees with her, telling her that what he is doing is right and he doesn't care if he dies for something that is right. Shiori insists him to not be crazy, because the instructors really will kill him, because in the past there are many students that have died there because they tried to fight back. Hibiki does not listen to her at all and he pushes her away. And because of this, her phone fell down to the ground, and seeing this opportunity, Jun pins Shiori down on the ground and immediately informs Cheyenne. Cheyenne was totally disappointed with her since she was the student council president, and as her punishment, he tells all of her classmates to punish her, and if they don't, they will get punished in her place instead. And for Hibiki's punishment he tells the guard to beat all of his classmates instead of him, and every time Hibiki does something wrong, they will all get punished in his place. Seeing Shiori and his classmates being in trouble because of him, Hibiki couldn't bear it anymore, and he submits to Cheyenne telling him that he was right and the one who is wrong was him all along. Hearing this, Cheyenne orders to stop the punishment and all his classmates spits on him, telling him that he should go and kill himself for dragging them in this stupid mess. And Shiori tells him that he is a worthless and to never speak to her again. Hibiki gets really angry and depressed at himself for trying to act like a hero when they didn't even deserve it. Shin comes towards him telling him that this wouldn't have happened if he was his dog. Therefore, Hibiki immediately begs him to let him be his dog. But Shin rejects his request and tells him that he never goes back because it will ruin his reputation. But, Hibiki begs him again. So, Shin tells him that he will only take him back if he fulfills his three conditions. 1. He should become the leader of his class. 2. Oust Wudo from his position as a discipline officer. And lastly, he will reveal it after he finishes these two conditions. Meanwhile, Hibiki's classmates instruct his roommates to beat him up when he comes back to his room and they all agree. Suddenly, Hibiki enters the room and he tells them to make him their class leader. They all laugh at him, but Hibiki shows them a large amount of luxurious food and tells them that if they make him their leader, they will be able to eat this luxurious food every day, and they immediately agrees to his demands. After that, he begins telling him his plan to all of them to beat Wudo. And with that Hibiki heads to Wudo's room and challenges him to a fight by mocking him and his underlings. They were very angry at him, so they all chase after him and he runs away from their dorm as per his plan. 
He starts defeating Wudo's underling one by one, and he manages to stop the remaining of his underling by using a trap and allowing only Wudo to come after him inside their dormitory. Suddenly, Bin closes the dormitory and all of Wudo's underling was locked outside because it was 9 p.m. And as per the rule curfew is at 9 p.m. But Wudo did not worry at all because he know he can beat Hibiki all by himself. Hibiki just laughs at him and all of Hibiki's underlings starts appearing from behind him, because they all have been waiting for him in their dormitory. Wudo finally realized that Hibiki had planned for this all along, and they all start beating him and all of Wudo's underling couldn't do anything but watch, as he gets beaten up by a bunch of weaklings just like a dog. Meanwhile, Jun seduces Ryo, one of the instructors, to get her the phone again. And the next day, he immediately went to Cheyenne to ask him for the phone and tells him that it is his duty to take care of such matters. In the morning assembly, Hibiki shows Cheyenne a huge number of cell phones and tells him that he found out that Wudo the student discipline officer has been smuggling phone in the school for a very long time. He further tells Cheyenne that his teaching and the encouragement of his classmates have convinced him to repent for his wrongdoing. And therefore, he tried to stop Wudo from doing such acts, but instead, he invited to join him. And when he refuses, he sent all of his classmates against him. But thanks to the help of his classmates, they were able to defeat them. Cheyenne believes his story and he starts beating Wudo like crazy, and as his punishment he is sent to the hole for one week. He tells Hibiki well done and he is very happy that he has repent, and he has high expectations of him. After that, Cheyenne went to meet the headmistress where he found out that one of the students named Moku had escaped from that school to go back to his home and his parents has come there to bring him back. As the parents leave, the headmistress gets really angry at Cheyenne for slipping up. So, she punishes him with a whip and Ryo notices all of this and he truly wants to exchange places with Cheyenne. Later, Ryo meets with Wudo, and he tells him that he has been set up by Hibiki and he promises him that he will get back all of his phones. But Ryo tells him that he doesn't know what he is talking about. And earlier, Jun has told him to take revenge on Wudo for embarrassing her. So, he orders the guards to beat him up badly, and after that, they will take him to Cheyenne for further punishment and interrogation. After that, Ryo meets up with Jun and she tells him that the phone he gave her was not her phone, and Ryo realized that Cheyenne must have switched her phone earlier, so, he vows that he will get him for this. Elsewhere, Hibiki meets up with Shin and he praises him that his plan really worked and he asks him how did he know about all the phones that Wudo possess. Shin replies that he will eventually learn if he stay long enough in that school. Shin takes him to his room and Hibiki gets really surprised because his room is very luxurious and had all the necessary things he can relax and enjoy with. And Hibiki wonders who Shin really is. After that, he tells him about his third condition that his next target is the class 6 leader, named Yo, who is a phone trader just like Wudo. He explains to him that the instructors and staff have been helping some of the student to do an illegal trade in the school, because they profit a lot from these trades. And this is the reason why the staff did not interfere in his fight with Wudo because they did not want any trouble, and they have a lot of students working for them and therefore they did not bother with losing Wudo at all. And since Cheyenne has high expectations of Hibiki, Shin tells him that his job is to find all the traders and report them to Cheyenne. And if he does this, Cheyenne will trust him more and the other students will acknowledge his superiority as well. Therefore, it will be easy for him to help Shori in getting her a phone or helping her in anything she needs. But, Hibiki was hesitant and tells him that he had already smuggled a phone for her, and therefore he don't need to continue with the mission. Shin tells him that even if he gives her the phone now, she will still treat him like garbage. And the only way to make her acknowledge him, is by rising up the ranks. He promises him that he will do everything to help him out, but, in the end, it is all up to him if he wants to be the top of this school, or continue staying as a loser. Hearing all this, Hibiki decides to accept the deal, and Shin tells him a plan. First, he must gather information about Yo in order to deal with him, because he has heard rumors about Yo, and he knows that he is not an ordinary opponent. So, Hibiki went to his room and tells his roommates his plan and orders them that they have work to do. But they all tells him that they are tired of following his dangerous path, and besides, if they just do whatever the instructor says to them, they will be free in a year, and there is no point in doing something so crazy and risky. Hibiki got so angry at them that he tells them to continue being a loser and he quits being their leader. Meanwhile, Ryo went to meet Shin, because he thought that Cheyenne would have given Jun's phone to him, since he suspects that they might have made a secret deal with each other. 
He chokes him and asks about the phone, but his bodyguard immediately comes to his rescue, and he can fight against an instructor as well, because he has permission from the headmistress to use violence against anyone who tries to harm Shin. Shin tells Ryo that he only wants to live in peace, and he is telling the truth about not having the phone because he has given the phone to Hibiki. Elsewhere, the leader of Class 18, Akane and Haku came to meet Shiori in order to make a deal with her to unite the three girls' classes into one. Because, Shiori has a lot of influence in Class 19 and they know that she can easily persuade all the girls from Class 19 to join them. But, Shiori refuses their request until they show her a device that has an internet connection. Akane tells her that she can finally communicate with her little brother by using this device, but she will get the device only if she joins them. Shiori is surprised that she knows about her little brother, so she asks her about it. Akane explains that stuff like that is easy for her, because she can easily hack into the school database and looked up on anyone's profile. She was also able to access her family register by using the police data system, and learned that her parents are dead, and she has an 11-year-old brother named Shu, who is currently in the first central hospital, coronary care, ward room 13, on the 8th floor. Shiori is very impressed with her hacking skills and she tells her that she will join them only if she gives her a working phone. Akane reveals that she currently doesn't have a working phone, but she has made a device that can track a phone that has internet connection and is working, and therefore, with her help they can fight the person who has the phone and take it from them. At the same time, Hibiki gets gang up by Wudo's underling who came to take revenge on him. But as per Shin's plan, Hibiki starts beating himself up and spray ketchup saws all over himself, and he starts shouting loudly, saying he will never join them and break the rules by smuggling phones and he will never betray Instructor Cheyenne. Suddenly, Cheyenne makes his appearance and they were all trapped just like Shin has planned it. And as punishment, Khan, the ringleader gets sent to the hole for three days and the rest were given punishment by not getting any meals that day. But then, as Cheyenne leaves, Hibiki tells Wudo's underling that his only target was Khan, and if all of them joins him, he will provide them with luxurious food items every day, and they all decides to follow him. With that, Hibiki immediately asks them about the location where Class 6 do their business, and they tell him that it's behind the dorm in the second class building, and Hibiki finds it very strange, since Shin had told him that it was in the dining hall. They warn him not to go after Class 6 because their leader Yo is very strong. But the worst one is their homeroom teacher named Ryo because he shows no mercy to anyone who mess with his class. And they all tell him to be careful because he is currently being targeted by someone. Because earlier, they got the information that he is going to be here at noon. And that's how they came to fight him. Hearing this, Hibiki becomes more suspicious of Shin thinking he must have set him up. Just then, Shiori and the girls suddenly came and they met Hibiki and it turns into a very awkward situation for Hibiki and Shiori that they couldn't even look at each other. On seeing Hibiki, Akane suddenly jumps on him and immediately proposes, because she totally fell in love with his good looks. However, Haku immediately demands the phone that Wudo was smuggling, because she knows that the phone is with him now, and warns him, if he don't, she will give him a pounding that a virgin like him needs. However, all the boys were excited in hearing this and tells her to give them a pounding as well and they all start fighting. But Haku is a very strong fighter, and she is able to defeat all of them on her own and only Hibiki was left. They demand the phone from him and threatening him that it won't end well for him if he don't. But then, Shin makes his entrance. And on seeing him Shiori gets really pissed at him for giving the phone to her that has no internet connection. Shin tells her that she should have used her common sense to check properly before the deal, and he starts telling them that if they join him, he will make sure that they won't regret it. And he shows Hibiki as an example that he has accomplishes many things like beating Wudo in just a few days and being there, and he could accomplish all of this because he agreed to be his dog. Hibiki tries to convince them as well that it is true, but Shiori gets so disgusted with him that she starts telling him that the only thing he is good at is wagging his tail as a dog, and she tells him to never talk to her again. And with that, they immediately start fighting. Shin and Hibiki had no choice but to run away since Haku is a lot stronger than them. But the girls chase after them not knowing that it is Shin's plan. And when they reach on the boys' bathroom, they saw many boys there from class 6 including Yo. And both Shiori and Haku is immediately defeated by Yo as he is much stronger than them. But as Yo tries to beat Shiori more, Hibiki immediately stops him and he asks Shin what is going on. Shin explains to him that they are their new comrades, which includes Yo, the leader of class 6, and Ban, the leader of class 20, since they approached him earlier to make a deal with them and he accepted. 
With that, Shin orders Hibiki to take naked pictures of the girls they had captured so that they can use it to dominate over them. But Hibiki couldn't bring himself to do it at all. So, Shin warns him not to defy him for the second time, since he knows already that the last time, he did not make plot with Shiori. And if he defies him again, he will become his worst enemy. So Hibiki decides to accept his deal. But he tells him he will take a photo of only one of the girls and he need to make a promise that he will not hurt them in the future if they don't defy him. But, he secretly hints the girls that he is making a plan. He tells Ban to let go of Shiori, because he cannot undress her that way. And as Ban lets Shiori go, Hibiki immediately throws a jacket on his face and he hold him down and tell all the girls to escape from there and to inform the instructor. Akane and Haku is able to escape, but Shiori was too late and she gets capture again. Shin was completely disappointed with Hibiki, but Hibiki tells him that he will never swear loyalty to someone like him, because he knew that he was trying to set him up from the start. Suddenly, Bin makes his entrance telling all of them to explain themselves. But Ryo makes his entrance as well telling Bin that he got a report that all the smuggle phone was with Hibiki and he immediately pins Hibiki down. Shin tells Hibiki that the vice head instructor, Ryo, is on his side now, and Hibiki finally realized that Shin had betrayed him and he has set him up as he had made a deal with Ryo earlier. And as his punishment for hiding the smuggle phones and lying to the instructors, Hibiki is sent to solitary prison for two weeks, and his accomplice, the girls will get five additional kilometers to run daily and a month of bathroom cleaning duty. And before going to solitary, Shiori tells Hibiki to stay away from her from that moment on. Inside the cell, Hibiki gets really depressed, but he decides to never give up and he will never trust anyone again thinking that all of them are trash, and he comes to the conclusion that he needs to be the strongest man, because in this world, only the strong can be righteous. Hibiki promises himself that he will become the strongest man no matter what and he doesn't care even if he has to sell his soul, but he will surely get back at all of them for what they did, and he starts training like a madman without any rest. Cheyenne sees his dedication and is totally surprised and impressed with him. And with this, Cheyenne remembers the past, that seven years ago when he was a cop. They were betrayed by their own member and he was so scared to die on the battle against a mob of gangsters, that he wet himself. But his best friend was able to pull him to his senses. But in the end, he betrayed his friend by hiding from the fight instead of calling for backup, just like his friend has instructed him to do. And because of this, his friend died in the battlefield for nothing. After the funeral, he went to meet his wife because he felt guilty for his death. His wife blamed him for coming back alive when everyone else died on the battlefield, and she complains about her children that they never come home. So, Cheyenne decides to check on his friend's children and he found out that the son was totally addicted with internet games, that he did not even come to his own father's funeral, and he don't even visit his mother who was in the hospital. He confronts him about it, but the boy tells him that his parents has abandoned him completely, and they never even noticed that he was bullied every day in school, and he was always alone because his family had to move places a lot of time because his father was a cop. And while he was showing his anger and frustration at Cheyenne, the boy ends up getting sick because he was very malnourished and he ends up passing away. On his funeral, Cheyenne decides to quit being a cop because he realized that being a cop is really useless when you cannot even save your own friend. Later, he decides to find the daughter as well and with the help of his friend he was able to find her, and the daughter turns out to be the headmistress of the school in the future. He decides to go to her place where she was staying to talk to her, but he ends up finding her trying to make plot with an ugly old man and he realizes that she has turned into a plot machine for making money. Cheyenne ignores the old man and confronts Jean. What was she doing with her life? But, the old man suddenly gets a heart attack and Jean throws away the medicine of the old man and Cheyenne couldn't stop her, leading to the death of the old man. So, Cheyenne angrily asks her what was she doing, and she explains that she and the old man had just married the day before, and she wanted to kill him so that she can get his money. Hearing this, Cheyenne starts scolding her even more, asking her that how can the daughter of a hero falls to such a low-level scum. But Jean gets angry at him, and she starts hitting him with a whip like a crazy woman telling him that their father was no hero because he abandoned his family for his work and now that he is dead, no one is there to take care of their family. And she had no choice but to work as a plot machine to support her family. And this is not all, when her father was alive, she had to drop school because her father's job didn't pay enough and he was never there when her mother felt sick and had to be admitted to the hospital because he was busy with his job. And even though with all that suffering their family was going through, her father still chose the job over the family so that he can feel like a hero. 
Later, after her anger subsides, Jean reveals that she will not be getting the old man's money because it will be going to his ex-wife and his child, and that's why she wanted to kill him for wasting her time. And she further tells him that the only thing she got from him is his stock in a ruined school. Hearing all this, Cheyenne felt guilty for letting her father die. So, he tells her to hit him more, because that's the only time his heart feels at peace as it takes away his guilt for betraying her father. But Jean is smart, so she gives him an offer to serve her in that school instead, where she will be the headmistress and that's how Cheyenne became the head instructor. After two weeks had passed, Hibiki was finally let out of the cell and his aura has totally changed. Meanwhile, Akane was in trouble as all the boys were chasing after her because she left her cleaning duty, and the boys wants to catch her for a reward from the instructors. While she is running, she bumps into Moku and falls to the ground and both of them were in deep trouble because the boys wants to beat Moku as well because they find him annoying. Just then, Hibiki appears and he is able to save the both of them by beating the out of all those boys mercilessly, and they had no choice but to escape. Moku is very impressed with him, and Akane tells Hibiki to follow her so that she can treat his wounds. But as they enter the room, she locks the door and immediately tries to develop plot with him. Just then, Haku and Shiori arrives to save Akane but ends up seeing her and Hibiki together. Hibiki just stands up and looks at them coldly and challenges Haku to a fight, telling them that if he wins, they will have to work together with him for the escape plan. In the morning assembly, Hibiki calls out for Cheyenne and in front of the whole class. He tells him that while he was in solitary he reflected upon his sins and he vows from the bottom of his heart that he will never do it again. And from that day onwards he vows that he will think of his classmates as his brothers and he requests Cheyenne to give him one more chance. Everyone looks at Hibiki and they know it's all just an act for his plan and they think that Cheyenne will never fall for it. But turns out, Cheyenne fell for it, and he is very proud of Hibiki and he tells everyone to follow his example. After that, the girls class came towards them and their instructor named Cho challenges Cheyenne to let his students fight against his, and they will compare who is the better instructor. Cheyenne accepts the challenge and chose his fighter, and they immediately went to fight with the girls. But turns out, the girls were much stronger than the boys and they were all defeated brutally. And Cheyenne is so disappointed with them that he gave them a punishment that the boys won't be getting dinner. But, Hibiki immediately stands up and tells Cheyenne to let him try, so that he can prove his repentance by defending his honor. With that, he immediately went after Haku the strongest fighter in the girls' class, and he tricks her with a handshake as he gropes her boops. Haku gets furious at him and immediately starts throwing her punches at him without stopping. Everyone starts talking shit about Haru that he is only trying to show off, and Cho tells Cheyenne that soon they will need a stretcher for Haru. But everyone doesn't realize that it was his plan all along by making Haku angry to make her fight without thinking so that she will lose all her stamina. Haru has been training to develop his endurance and stamina in the cell, and the moment he saw that Haku is tired, he locks her with his arms and leg forcing her to surrender, and he ends up winning the fight. Everyone was surprised that he is able to beat her, but Cho was not satisfied with the match and he calls Hibiki a cheater. So, Cheyenne tells him it that it is a fair match because the only rule was to beat the opponent. And if he has a problem with that, they can spar right now, but Cho admits his defeat because he did not want to spar with the strongest man on the campus. Just then, Ryo make his entrance, telling Cheyenne that winning against girls is not really prestigious and he tells them that they should fight their class instead, where Yo, the strongest fighter from class 6 will be fighting against Hibiki, the strongest fighter of class 4. Cheyenne disagrees to his request, because it is not fair for Yo to fight against Hibiki, because he is an experienced fighter, and Hibiki is just a normal student. Hearing this, Ryo calls Cheyenne a pussy telling him that the only way he knows how to raise his profile is by beating girls. Hibiki takes this as his opportunity to earn Cheyenne trust and tells them that instead of competing by fighting, they should do a basic competition instead, like standing at attention without moving, since everyone can do that, and whoever moves first loses. The instructors accepts his proposal and they begin the competition, and both of them was unwilling to lose at all. After one hour, they were still fighting and everyone couldn't even stand properly anymore, but Hibiki and Yo were still standing without moving even an inch and all the girls including Shiori were very impressed with Hibiki's dedication. After three hours they were still competing and Yo is about to collapse, but Hibiki is still standing strong. Finally, Cheyenne offers a proposal to end the match with a draw, because they both might collapse. Ryo decides to accept his proposal because he is worried that he might lose, and therefore, the match ends with a draw. 
After the match, Shion is very proud of Hibiki and he orders him that he can rest in his room for the entire day, and Moku volunteers to help him to his room. Upon reaching his room, Hibiki immediately tells Moku to gather two buckets of water, one with cold water, and the other with hot water, because he knows that the fight is not over. Yo makes his way to Hibiki's room with his underling to beat him up for embarrassing him earlier. But the moment he enters his room, Hibiki immediately throws the cold water at him, followed by the hot water. Yo gets furious at him, but as he tries to fight, his whole body became heavy and he couldn't even move and he wonder what was going on. Hibiki explains that due to the competition, his stamina was at its limit, and getting hit with cold water followed by hot water in his state causes convulsions in his muscles and this is the reason why he can't even stand right now. So, Hibiki starts beating him up and his underling tries his best to stop him. Meanwhile, Hibiki's classmates thought that by now, Yo would have gone to his room and gave Hibiki a good beating, and they decides that they should submit to Yo, otherwise they will be in trouble as well. But as they reached there, they were all surprised to see that Hibiki was the one who is dominating Yo. On seeing Hibiki's classmates, Yo's underling immediately orders them to join the fight and to help him beat Hibiki. But, Hibiki tells all of them to fight against Yo instead, so that they can get their freedom and live freely in this school. They were all hesitant, but Moku makes his move and he is able to defeat Yo's underling with a chair, and Hibiki gets really impressed by his guts to fight back. The current leader of class 4, Sei, tries to persuade his classmates that they should fight against Hibiki and beat him now, because Yo works under instructor Ryo, and it will be best for them to avoid trouble with him. But the rest of Hibiki's classmates beat Sei instead, and they all decide to support Hibiki and make him their class leader again. But, they all ask him, how is a class full of new students fight against an established regulars like Yo, and the others? Hibiki tells them that it is simple, and he decides to show them an example by breaking the bones in Yo's body with a stick, and he tells everyone that whoever stands against him or mock him from now onwards, they will all end up the same way as Yo. The next day, as Hibiki wakes up from his bed, all of his classmates including Sei visits him and they all tell him to forgive them for everything they have done to him in the past, and from that moment on, they will always follow him without question. Hibiki finds this very strange, because in the past, they were always trying to earn Shin's good favor. And he just took out Yo and he wonders shouldn't they be beating him while he was down instead of submitting themselves to him, because he knows that Yo and Shin are working together. He thought that maybe they have stopped being afraid of Shin, but then, he wonders why is no one talking about Shin, and why did Yo suddenly came out in the open to challenge him. So, he thought that maybe it was Shin's plans to manipulate them from behind the scenes. But he wonders again, why has instructor Ryo not come after him since he defeated his best student and smuggler? All of this puts a lot of question in Hibiki's mind and he wonders what the hell is Shin planning. With that, he accepts the proposal of his classmates to be their leader again, and he asks them about Shin but they all tells him that they have not seen or heard about him for a while now. So, Hibiki orders them to report to him immediately, if they hear anything about Shin and warns them that they should not bully Moku, otherwise there will be grave consequences for them. Meanwhile, Hayo, a worker of Shin's elder brother makes his way to the school, where Shin's older brother orders him to bring Shin back from that school. Upon reaching the school, he starts beating Shion for all the troubles he heard that the students were causing, blaming him that he can't even properly manage the students. Jean immediately stops him, and tells him that she is the headmistress of that school, and he should show some respect to her and warns him that he will be in trouble if he tries to flex his power again just because he works for Shin's elder brother, who is one of the major shareholders of that school. So, Hayo had no choice but to give up, but he tells Shion that he will be replacing him as an instructor, because Shion will need time to heal from his injuries, and Jean had no choice but to accept his demand. After that, he calls Ryo to follow him, and Ryo starts reporting him that they have lost both Wudo and Yo who is one of their major smugglers in the school. And this is all because of a new student named Hibiki, and he tells him that they should get rid of him. But, Hayo immediately tells him that he has heard that Shin was beat up by him and he is currently missing now. And he starts doubting him, that maybe he has beaten him to death, and he has hid his dead body. With an anxious face, Ryo tells him that he did not do such a thing and he do not know the whereabouts of Shin, because he and his bodyguard just disappeared a while back. Hayo decides to believe him and he asks him about the phone that Jun uses, but Ryo makes an excuse that it is currently not with him. 
After that, Hayao makes a call to Shin's elder brother informing him about the situation and he tells him not to worry because he will find Shin no matter what. Suddenly, Jun appears and she starts seducing Hayao and he gives her all the information she requested from him, and he tells her that she won't have to suffer anymore. Elsewhere, Akane, Shiori and Haku gangs up on Yo's underling and they take away his phone forcefully. Akane explains to Shiori that the phones circulated in the school are only used for gaming, since they cannot be used for calling or send email, and they cannot connect to another network as well. But the phone they got could connect to the school internet, but it has a problem since the access authority is limited, and therefore it can only be used for viewing stuffs online and nothing else. But Akane assures Shiori that since she is a genius, she can break through any kind of limitations put on a cell phone. Plus, she has created her own network that she coded herself, and the only thing they need now is to find her device that can connect to her network. And once they obtain that device, they can use the internet as much as they want. Hearing all this, Shiori gets really curious about Jun and she informs the girls that Jun was able to use her phone for calling without any restriction. So, Shiori starts to suspect that Jun is connected to someone superior from that school, and therefore she tells Akane and Maku that they need to investigate about her. But, Haku gets curious about Shiori as well, so, she asked why did an honor student like her end up in this school, and who send her here, since she knows that both her parents are dead. Just then, Shiori remembers about her past. After the death of her father, her mother committed suicide as well, and she gets really depressed by all this because she was really worried about the well-being of her younger brother. But, her younger brother managed to cheer her up by promising her that he will protect her no matter what, since he is a boy and he requests her to not worry anymore and to stop crying. After a while, their uncle came and he told them that he will be their guardian from now onwards, and Shiori decides to accept his offer since she was thinking about her brother, not knowing that this is gonna be her worst mistake. Later, she discovers that her younger brother was diagnosed with a hereditary cancer and they will be needing a lot of money to cure him. Shiori was heartbroken to hear this, but her uncle tells her not to worry about the money, because he will cover it all, and he promises that he will surely save her brother. But after some time, her uncle tells her that he is lonely and she should help him cure that, since he has been working hard to get the money for her brother and he needs some motivation. So, Shiori had no choice but to accept. But soon she discovers that her uncle has been stealing her parents' money to pay for all of his entertainment, and he had tricked her into believing that it is his money. And as her revenge, she decides to end his life, but she was stopped by him because she was too weak. And because of this, he made sure to make her suffer by sending her to that school, and telling her younger brother that his sister has abandoned him. And he did all this so that he can mentally torture her, while still getting all of their parents' money and property. Suddenly, Hibiki makes his entrance and he tells the girls to follow him. But, Shiori immediately leaves them because she did not want to talk about her past. Hibiki did not bother to go after her and he takes Akane and Haku to Shin's hideout to fight him and take him out. But as they reach there, Hibiki notices that the lock of the door has been broken. They enter inside and sees that someone had broken in earlier, and they had trashed the place searching for something. With that, they start searching for clues and Hibiki finds a letter and he immediately hides it from the girls. He also notices a stockpile of medicines and he wonders if Shin might actually be sick. At night after reading the letter, Hibiki immediately went to check the hidden place mentioned in the letter, and he is able to find Akane's device and Jun's phone. Hibiki finally realized that this is Shin's plan, and earlier Shin had lied to Ryo that Jun's phone was with Hibiki, because it was with him all along, and Hibiki wonders what the hell is Shin planning. Elsewhere, as Shiori enters her room she sees Jun who was waiting for her. Jun tells her that she knows that Shiori was trying to search for her and she also knows what she wants from her. Jun further tells her that she knows about her brother as well, and that she is stuck there in that school forever, until and unless her uncle allows her to leave. With that, she offers Shiori a deal telling her that if she does everything she says, she can get her out of this school in two days' time. Meanwhile, Hibiki couldn't sleep that night because of his lingering thoughts about Shin's plan because he cannot figure it out. Moku sees him, so he went towards him asking him that he should get inside, otherwise he will fall ill. But, Hibiki immediately grabs his shirt confronting him if he really did not hear anything about Shin when he was in the hole. Moku tells him that he truly did not hear anything about Shin. Hibiki asks him another question if he really was able to escape from that school by digging a hole. Moku replies to him that he did escape from the school but not by digging a hole. He met a certain student with purple hair who gave him a detailed map about the sewers to help him escape, 
and in return he asks him if he is successful in escaping. He should post on the internet about what's going on in that school. But after he posted, it was erased right away and his parents thought that he wasn't cured yet, so they sent him back to this school. Hearing all this, Hibiki thought that the purple hair student must be Shin. But, Moku tells him that the name of the student was not Shin, it was something else. So, Hibiki wonders who that person might be and what are his intentions. The next day, as the leader of class 4, Hibiki tells all his classmates that they will use today's training to get the head instructor Shin to acknowledge them. Because on doing so, the other classes will stop mocking them and they can get the head instructor to be on their side and everyone agrees. But deep inside, Hibiki's plan is to get close to Shion and get information from him about Shin. But sadly, his plans are crushed because instead of Shion, a new instructor named Hayo came in his place. Hayo introduces himself to everyone telling them that he will be replacing Shion for a while because Shion is suspended for dereliction of his duty, and the only way Shion will return to his duty is if they behave nicely with him. Hibiki was totally surprised and wonder who the hell is Hayo to have the power to suspend Shion the head instructor, and he wonders if he is involved with the disappearance of Shin as well. As his first lesson, Hayo tells all the students that they need to stand still for two hours without a single person breaking rank, otherwise they will have to start from the beginning. But as they all perform the drill, they were very close in finishing, but Moku couldn't bear it and he falls to the ground, and therefore all of them had to restart the drill from the beginning. But, Moku couldn't stand up at all and so, Hayo tries to punish him. Hibiki immediately stops him, telling him that they are new in that school. So, they lack stamina and as their leader he promises Hayo that he will do his best to train them, and he requests him to let them go for that day, and to limit all of his classmates' punishment to him alone. Hayo accepts his request, and he is very impressed with his courage. So, he takes him to his office and he offers him a deal. He tells him that right now in that school, he is the most famous person because he could accomplish things that no one could. And because of this, all the student respects him and view him as their leader. And that's why he wants Hibiki to work for him by managing the students with instructor Ryo, and help him with his cell phone business and he promises him that he will definitely not regret this deal. Hibiki was hesitant, so, Hayo shows him Shiori locked inside a cell in a very bad condition. And the moment she sees him, she starts crying, but she pulls herself together and decides not to ask his help. But then, Hibiki laughs like a madman and tells Shiori to cry and beg him more, and he tells Hayo that now he can truly see that having power is truly fun, because he can do whatever he wants, and therefore, he swears his loyalty to him. Hayo gives him his first mission, that if he finds a phone that he recently had lost, he will surely make it worth his while. Hibiki accepts the mission, and he makes a plan with Akane, Haku and Moku. Then after some time, he goes to his office and hands him the phone, telling him that it was an easy mission since his friends help him. But Hibiki already had the phone and was just pretending to find it, while making an escape plan with the girls and Moku. And as his reward, he asks Hayo to hand Shiori to him, because he has been waiting since middle school to make plot with her, and now that he has her in his grasp, he will take revenge on her for what she did to him by making a forceful plot with her. With that, he carries Shiori who was unconscious, outside, alone on his back, but he trips and falls. He starts crying and promises Shiori that they will soon be able to get out of that school, and it was his plan all along to help Shiori escape. Meanwhile, Shin is inside the sewers and he remembers about his mother. In the past, Shin warns his mother to be careful around her stepson, who is his stepbrother because he is planning to kill her. But she does not listen to him at all because of her kindness, and she tells him that they should not distrust their own family. And because of this, she was killed by his brother, and Shin swore that he will surely get his revenge on his brother and his father as well for treating her like garbage, just because she was his mistress. The next day, Haku, Akane and Moku goes missing because they are currently undergoing a mission that Hibiki had gave them. On the morning assembly, Ryo announces to the whole school that the committee has appointed Hibiki as the new student council president and discipline officer, and everyone must accept him. Later, Hibiki meets with Hayo and he gives him another mission to find Shin, and if he is able to complete the mission, his reward will be to do with Shin whatever he likes, because Hayo has learned the past history about him and Shin. After Hibiki leaves, Ryo tells Hayo that even the teachers couldn't find Shin, and therefore, he questions him if he really think that Hibiki can find him. Hayo replies that it does not matter even if he cannot find him because Shin will die soon as he is seriously ill. 
With that, Hibiki gather all the boys and gives them a very important mission, and he promises them that this will be their last training session because he is planning something big. Then, suddenly all the information about the school gets leaked in the internet, and all the people around the world could read all the illegal activities that was going on in that school. And because of this, all of the media around the country gather in that school to see what's really going on. As Hayao is scrolling through his phone, he sees the news on the internet, which made him to panic intensely and he wonders who could have sold them out, and he came to a conclusion that it must be Shin. He orders all the guards to shut off all power to the school, and to gather all the students on the athletic field and start their standard training, while Hayao tries to escape from the school. Meanwhile, outside the school Shiori made it to the hospital thanks to Hibiki. Akane, Moku and Haku are there as well looking after Shiori just like the way Hibiki had planned. And it is Akane who was the one who released all the information on the internet using her device that Hibiki had found earlier, because Hibiki had told her to do so. Simultaneously, as Hayao was on his way to escape, Hibiki confronts him and he reveals that he is the one who leaked the information and he has already found Shin, and he calls him to confirm it with his own eyes. Hearing all this, Hayao gets really angry, so, he tries to beat him, but he do not know that this is Hibiki's plan as well, to stall him as long as he could. Hayao is able to overpower him easily, but Hibiki starts to fight back and tells him that he will not let him escape. Just then, Cheyenne appears and he tells Hayao that they should surrender themselves to the police. But Hayao starts laughing crazily asking him on what accusation will the police arrest them. Because the only thing they are doing in this school is to make students better and besides, giving military training to the students and cutting off phone reception in the school is not illegal. Then, Hayao tries to force the student to say the same to the police, but he was surprised to see that there was no one on the field except them. And this is all because Hibiki had planned all this ahead with the students. But Hayao wasn't worried at all, because he knew the police will not come because they can cover it up by telling it is just a rumor that the students made it up. Suddenly, Shin lights a match and burns his room, which causes a huge explosion followed by the burning of his room. They were all shocked at seeing this, and because of this they knew that the police will surely come now. Cheyenne tells Hayao that as long as he stands, he won't let him escape, and he tells Hibiki to hurry up and complete his mission. Hibiki thanks him for being a wonderful instructor and he rushes towards Shin. Hayao immediately tries to punch Cheyenne but he gets knocked out by him with a single punch. And Hibiki was finally able to meet Shin, and he just smiles at him, and Shin starts smiling back at him with tears on his eyes.